Hey, this is Dave. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, creating a pasture. Uh, when we moved onto our property here, we had a really big lawn, but we didn't, and we wanted to create some pasture for uh, a goat and maybe some other animals. We didn't want to necessarily use a portion of our lawn, and uh, we had some woods we weren't using, and we decided to hire a guy with a, a caterpillar track loader basically mow down those trees uh, rather than going and cutting them down and dealing with the stumps. It worked out really well. Basically he cleared two two fields, one acre each, by just pushing the trees down into, into a pile on the end of the field. And then we were left with the challenge of, of turning that dirt into uh, pasture. And uh, uh, first of all, the gentleman that had the track loader came back with a um, a bobcat and basically just smoothed out all the little rough edges on the field so it was basically flat. And uh, after talking to several folks, we the next step what we that we did is we made one of the I guess what they're called our draggers. And what this dra the purpose of this dragger is is to loosen up the soil just enough to prep it for the seeds so that the seeds uh, are about a quarter inch below the surface of the ground. Um, here in North Carolina we have a fair amount of clay and when the ground dries it gets a hard cake surface and you want to loosen it up a little bit. We started out with a wire mesh fence and just cut out a, about a three by six foot section. On one end we took a two by six and uh, nailed nailed it to the back of the wire mesh fence and the purpose of this is so that when you start pulling it you don't just rip the ends of the wire mesh fence out it kind of strengthens it on the other end is the weight that's going to keep the the fence uh, on the ground and loosen up the dirt this is just a standard cinder block right now it's it's loose but uh, when I used it I had this tied at several places with rope to keep it on the on the wire mesh and then I just uh, took a rope and uh, put a loop on each end and uh, tied it up to the hitch on my pickup truck and just pulled it around the field for 20 or 30 minutes, just zigzagging every direction just to loosen up that soil a little bit. The next step was to prep the ground for the seed and based on some advice from uh, our friend Randy at Tractor Supply, we got some lime and some 10-10-10 uh, fertilizer and we basically put 10 bags of each on each field. Each field was about an acre in size and we applied it with this uh, spreader that we had. Um, it was a pretty good job, you know, with the ground being a little bit rough. If you have something a little bigger or something you can pull behind, that would make it even easier, but we just used this spreader. Next, we had to apply the seed, and uh, we got this hand spreader from Tractor Supply. It works really well. You just you fill it up with the seed, and then you close the zipper on top, clear it over your shoulder, it rests on your, uh, on your waist, and you just walk along turning this and it spreads uh, the seeds out evenly. It works really well. We applied almost a full bag of this Kentucky 31 fescue for each acre of land, which was, you know, pretty thorough spreading of seeds. I mean, it was a lot of seeds. And then you wait for and hope for rain. Uh, we had a really dry summer this year. So this was about a month and a half ago that we seeded. We didn't have any rain for a while, and then we had rain here and there. We just had some rain last night. So it's been pretty dry. And the other thing we did to prep uh, was we applied uh, straw bales out. I got about 20 straw bales for an acre of land, and I spread that out evenly. Um, this particular land here has a pretty good slope to it. So we were concerned about erosion. And um, so one thing we did is at three different locations going down the hill, we laid out some barriers to try to slow down the water 
so it wouldn't uh, get get a lot of speed going down the hill. Uh, we you, you could use rocks. Uh, we happen to have a, a lot of old uh, pieces of scrap wood, two by sixes, that we just spread, and we basically made three lines down the hill just to kind of break up the water. Um, I've since removed them because um, didn't feel like I necessarily needed them anymore since some of the grass has taken root, and I didn't the wood was starting to warp, and I didn't want to let all the wood go bad. Uh, as you can see, we have a mixture of some of the seed has taken root. We've also got some weeds coming in. Um, our hope is that this first year we will get the grass to take root and in the fall we're going to reseed um, before it gets too cold and then our hope is next year it will actually become a pasture that can be usable. Uh, we're just going to let the weeds go with with the exception of the thistles. Um, this area used to have a lot of thistles and I guess because of that some of them are popping up and we're just gonna we're gonna shoot that with uh, with our one gallon sprayer of Roundup, we're just going to go around and do some spot spraying on the thistles to get rid of those. But, but other than other than that, we're just going to let everything grow. Uh, our future plan is to put a fence around this with about a four foot walkway around the field so that we can uh, walk around um, and get access to the pasture from different angles. And we'll talk about that more in the future. But uh, that's. The purpose of this video is just to give you a quick overview of getting this pasture to seed. Thanks.